Welcome to Heart of Science. Thank you so much for giving up your valuable time in speaking to me today. Now, you're a professor of inorganic electrochemistry. While it's more obvious how something like organic chemistry, which involves drugs and medicine, applies to the real world, what role does inorganic chemistry research have in impacting our day-to-day -day lives? I mean, I think if I throw back the question to you, when you say drugs and medicine, I mean, I think probably one of the best known anti-cancer drugs is cisplatin, and that has platinum in it, which makes it an inorganic compound. Anything that has a metal in it is an inorganic. So I think people think of drugs, for example, as being organic. I don't know why, because many of them contain metals. Or if we talk about catalysts, you know, your car, for example, that contains metals in it. So inorganic for me is just as important as organic. It just contains different elements in the periodic table. Many people will hear the word electrochemistry and be instantly uninterested involving the word <laughs> well involving the word chemistry which people may be struggled with at school and electricity which we can't even see why is electrochemistry of importance to the people listening to this program i think you'll find that many of the things that we take for granted on a day-to-day -day requires electrochemistry so let's go back to the car again of course you can't start the car without your battery well the battery is just electrochemistry in action so, you know, we can't get through the day without electrochemistry. Electrochemistry is just the transfer of electrons. That's what it means. And so, you know, reduction in oxidation reactions occur in your body every day. Cake rising relies on redox reactions. You know, lots of things. It's just we don't refer to it in those terms. But all electrochemistry is, is looking at is the transfer of electrons to and from a species and seeing what happens as you do that. Electrochemistry has been around for a long time. Hmm. What, what further research could possibly be carried out on a topic that is so <laughs> old? Is electrochemistry not yet complete? Well, I mean, I think people understand what electrochemistry is about, the transfer of electrons. We discover more and more ways we can use it. But what my particular interest in electrochemistry was looking at solar energy dyes because solar energy dyes require the sun to shine on them. That's the solar bit that excites an electron within the compound itself. And that electron then moves around and does some work, it moves around an external circuit. That's what my type of electrochemistry was about. And I, I don't know where you sit on the fence, but I am a firm believer in renewable energy. And I'm a firm believer that the one renewable energy source that we have an unlimited or a practically unlimited a supply of is solar energy. But have we cracked it yet? No, we haven't. So um, there's still a need for research in your yeah. opinion. Yeah. So there's still loads of areas that electrochemistry still has huge important parts to play. Can you tell me a bit about spectroelectrochemistry? That's really what I specialised in with spectroelectrochemical techniques. And that was combining electrochemistry, that is transferring electrons to and from a compound, a species, uh, and at the same time studying them using a spectroscopic technique. Now you can combine almost any other spectroscopic technique with electrochemistry. The two I chose to work with was EPR, or electron paramagnetic resonance spectroscopy, and UV visible, that's color, changing the color. You mentioned the ability to use electrochemistry to help reduce our energy crisis. But is solar energy much use in a country like ours, where half of the day barely sees the sun for most part of the day? Yes, it does. And that's why you see so many houses now with solar panels on them. Yes, it's perfectly possible in the UK. I mean, I'm in Edinburgh, for goodness sake. I'm even further north than you are in Leeds. And it will play its part. But I think probably where it's having its biggest impact at the moment is in places like Africa where they can't easily transport electricity is very difficult. But, you know, you can put your solar panel up and therefore do your heating, lighting, cooking in houses where it's very difficult for them to get electricity by any other means. In your opinion, is renewable energy a solution to our problems of global warming or is the problem now irreversible? I want this wonderful world they live in to be available for my children, my children's children. So I'm not a defeatist. I'm an optimist. I think we've recognized the problem and we're also scientists, you know, and we like a challenge and, you know, we're up for solving that challenge. So yes, we have a problem and yes, global warming, but 
Can we do something about it? Yes, I absolutely believe we can do something about it. And do I think science and engineering has something to do with the solution? I think it's got everything to do with the solution. So do you think geoengineering may help in this solution? Personally, I think we have to have an energy mix. And so I think we should be looking at all forms and looking at all solutions here. And so my wish is that we could get to 100% renewable, but we can't do that tomorrow. So in the interim, we have to rely on fossil fuels, etc. But we have to look to see how we can decrease that use and increase our use of renewables. You are president of the Royal Society of Chemistry. I'd like to ask what role you think the Royal Society of Chemistry has in making chemistry more accessible and in inspiring the next generation to pursue a career in the chemical sciences? I think it's our foremost professional society. It's a society, I think, all professional chemists, whether they be in academia and in industry, teachers, wherever they are, should all want to be members of. I think it plays a vital role. And because it has members all the way from students, all the way through people at school, all the way through, I think it can appeal to all the different markets and therefore it has a central role to play in being able to spread the good word of chemistry, what the positive connotations that chemistry can bring. Did you sometimes feel the role of President of the Royal Society of Chemistry was an added burden, making you a spokesperson of all British chemists? Or did you feel it enhanced your ability to carry out your own scientific research activities? I never, ever felt it was a burden. It was a real privilege to be the president of the Royal Society of Chemistry. I thoroughly enjoyed that job. I reluctantly handed it over at the end of my two-year period of being president. But if it had been up to me, I would have kept it forever. I thought it was one of the best jobs in the world. I loved it. Where else do you get to meet so many different people and be able to talk so positively about chemistry, a subject that I love and has given me a wonderful career and I just want other people to have that opportunity and that gave me the platform to have that opportunity. So you didn't feel in any way restricted in that role in what you could say? Never, never, absolutely not. No, I just thought it was a tremendous platform. I got to speak to people all over the world, other academics, top industrialists, politicians, policy makers, teachers, students, and everybody wanted to talk about how their interest in chemistry, we could work with to make it even better and to spread the good word so i have to say i can't honestly think of negative things that happened at all finally i'd like to ask you about your personal scientific career because you entered academia having left research for a period of time how did this impact on your reintegration into research communities yes i left and then i came back When I first came back, I think it was more difficult for me because I got out of the way, if you want, being in science. But, you know, you just come back and you start studying again. And then your enthusiasm for the subject, which had never gone away for me. And that's really why I came back to doing science again. But I have to admit that the initial coming back into science again was hard. It was hard. But was it worth it? Absolutely, it was worth it. And I've had a wonderful time since then. But I think I had to leave science to understand how important it was to me. And then that made me try all the harder when I came back. So do I regret leaving? No, I don't. Because why would I regret it? All the things that have happened to me have been so positive since then. Well, thank you for your time. It has been a privilege having the opportunity to speak to you. I've enjoyed speaking to you too. Thank you very much.